So there was one class that I co-taught with Eddie Kohler that was particularly fun. He and I were co-teaching CS61, and we were trying to teach the students about how you protect a system and make it able to, you know, give you the ability to run programs while someone else is running programs and not have them interfere. This is called process isolation. And so we decided to demo that by um, doing sort of a little skit where I was, I was Tom Riddle and he was <laughs> Ginny. And um, I had a fallen angel costume with a little halo and the black wings. And so, you know, one of us would be behind the screen and the other, you know, I would be up there going, oh, I'm going to do this. He'll never know how to break that. And then I would go behind the screen and he would come out and go, oh, what's wrong with our computer system? And he would fix it. And we did this a bunch of times and it was actually a lot of fun. And I'm pretty sure that most of the class remembers it. <laughs> So when I was a senior, it was fall semester of senior year, I was a teaching fellow for Harry when he was teaching a course that was then called AS11, which you all know by the name CS50. And um, we had given the midterm exam on a Friday, and we were grading it on, I think, a Saturday, which happened to be Halloween. And so Professor Lewis had invited us all to his home for dinner that evening. So, you know, there's 10 or 15 of us sitting around the room grading, and all of a sudden, spontaneously, I looked up and I said, it's Halloween. We're going to Harry's house. We should go dressed up as Harry. <laughs> and everyone in the room looked at me like, oh, that would be really cool. <laughs> so I had a car, so I went out and bought like these plastic pipes, and um, I found this brown fuzzy material, and so we cut that into rectangles, and I gave it to everybody and said, here is your do-it-yourself Harry Lewis look-alike kit. Um, you had to cut your own mustache, and um, the goal was go find a tweed jacket because at the time, Harry smoked a pipe, had a mustache, and wore a tweed jacket. So we're all congregating in the yard, and we finally go up to the door on mass, and we ring the doorbell, and Harry's wife, Marlon, answers the door, took one look at us, ran up the stairs to get the camera, and um, then Harry saw us, and then she got the picture from the top of the stairs of the whole crew of us, um, just as Harry Lewis. In my field, computer science, if you're going to be at a university, there is only one thing that the university really has to offer that industry doesn't, and that's students. So I don't understand why you would come to a university and not want to be engaged with the students, especially at a place like this where you are all rock stars and wonderful and awesome and smart and hardworking and all these other great things. So in my mind, it's a perk of the job as opposed to like, you know, a responsibility. Although the students we get here are smart and accomplished, they aren't in fact experienced experts in the field. And not that we know everything, but we've at least been around the block a few times and know what questions to ask. And I think, you know, knowing that there are people in your chosen field around you who actually care about you and care about your development as a human being and, and as a professional in the field, um, you know, I think that's just a really important thing. To the Harvard community, it's be the best Harvard you can be. To the students, faculty, and staff, that means holding the administration accountable and making sure that they continue to be the best Harvard we can be. And I also think that um, I heard this first in Toronto from somebody um, in Canada who said, diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice. And I think Harvard, diversity is in fact a fact in many ways. I don't think the institution has made inclusion as much of a choice. And I think inclusion starts in the classroom and it means giving the faculty the tools necessary to make sure that the classroom is inclusive for all students. And I think that is a piece that I have not heard from the administration. I think it's a piece where we are suffering, and I think it's the piece that can actually make the biggest difference to making Harvard an inclusive organization.